the big bill stack will keep you in the know. In the big bill stack will fix your techie woes. Some will break and some will make these till we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack, we will show you what to do. Come we'll hack it till we crack it and we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello, welcome to Bill Shank 057. I'm joined by Paul and Gareth from WeGrow, who's um, been doing the rounds on the Sheffield Maker scene for a while now. Um, is now turning his mind to aquaponics. Indeed, saving the planet, man. Yes, saving the planet. One fish at a time. Which is basically the combination of fish, uh, farming fish and farming plants in one kind of harmonious cycle, isn't it? Exactly. The fish poo and we goes and gets <laughs> pumped over the plants and that gets turned into delicious food for the plants, <laughs> and the plants become delicious food for us, and the water gets cleaned the and plants returned. plants are inserted into that system oh, yeah. somewhere. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. Fish pool, delicious. Mm. So it's like our IKEA thing, but there's another thing underneath with fish in. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's a two-tank two okay, solution, at least. Yeah. yeah. So what's the, what's the kind of things that you need to control here? Obviously, the IKEA one, you just have a load of fertilizer in there and a load of lights. But this avoids the having having the fertilizer in there, the nasty chemicals. Exactly, it's right. all naturally organic and all that goodness. Um, well, we monitor um, things like temperature, pH, um, uh, humidity, light levels, mm -hmm. and um, control the water flow. Yep. So um, bringing that all together, um, as well as giving you a bit of information about the system and quite a cool sort of dashboard or um, phone and that kind of thing. Um, it also means that we can create like a virtual community of growers. Yep. So it's a good sort of highway to get you connected to other people. So you share information about your systems, work out what's growing well or what isn't growing this well. This is the, the wider scheme to kind of investigate how these systems work and then try and build a better system. Exactly. Iterate upon like that. A sort of um, citizen science sort of when the When the zombie apocalypse comes around, you know who's asked to go around because <laughs> they've got food <laughs> and fish. And, and it's published on the internet. Oh, oh, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're going to take a look around the system, talk about how you came up with this, how you kind of solve problems. Um, how you come up with your solution, which is now on the Kickstarter. <laughs> Where is it on the Kickstarter? It's on the Kickstarter. The screen thing working. Not there. Uh, there. Uh -huh. Okay. So we'll post that. I think it's posted in the description below the video. Um, yeah. And so have a look at that. See if you want to build your community a kind of sustainable fish-related hydroponics um, growing thing with this system. Um, yeah. And there's also um, training and um, a few other goodies as well. So yeah. if you're not sure that you're ready to jump in, then um, like a day or two days training might be a great way to, to find out. Okay, good point. Awesome. Before we start, shall we explain why we've got <laughs> why you're this little yeah. thing sitting here so I can get it out of my way and not be yep. hidden? So this is Automation Hat. This is actually the demo we've prepared to take to Make a Fair Berlin. So it's designed to show off some of Automation Hat's features. Uh, in this case, I'm trying not to get the reflection of the lights. It's got three arcade buttons which are hooked up to the buffered inputs. And then it's got this little lighting fixture here, which is a 12 volt light stack with um, green, amber and red lights and a buzzer in it as well. A horrible, horrible noisy buzzer. Uh, so this is powered off the separate 12 volt power supply here. And that goes into the relays on Automation hat, which you can just see there. Get yeah, the you look them on the internet. internet. You can look them on the internet. Yeah. And then the arcade buttons control, which um, relay is activated. <coughs> and when the red gets activated, it plays a little beep. Uh, not much more of a buzz because the buzzer does sound terrible if you leave it running for any amount of time. It's not going to do that. So, yeah, that's yeah. automation hat for all your automation needs. It's So, the whole system is basically 20. 24 volt tolerant. Uh, we've we've specifically made it not mains because really <laughs> putting mains, mains on a hat is, is kind of like pretty edgy. It's 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 playful. <laughs> I sold the through through hole mains leads onto my pie, and now it's yeah. on fire. You need all kinds of separation and isolation there. But it's three twenty four volt relays. The inputs are 24, 24 volt buffered through a Darlington array. 
Are they? Is it a Darlington? Uh, like the Darlington. inputs are. What was it again? The inputs are not, in fact, buffered for a Darlington array on this. Okay. This one. The, buffer- it's the outputs that buffer through the Darlington array. That the would make more sense. Are buffered through a large resistor and a <laughs> diode that clamps them to 3.3 volts. It off- offloads any excess voltage. And it's also got three 24 volt ADC inputs, which, which are 12 bit. They are 12, 12, 12 whole bits. No, they're actually in practice 11 bit because it's a 12 bit. Uh, double-ended a- ADC, so it can actually peak. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you. It's <coughs> eleven bit. It's eleven. It's eleven bit technically because the the twelfth bit is in fact the sign bit, which we don't okay. use. Okay. Right. Brilliant. And um, we've managed to squeeze that. So you have got the three relays, the three ADCs, and then the three input outputs. So we've made it for the cubed price of twenty-seven pounds. Uh, and of course we've <laughs> we've, we've stuck Just lights all over it. Yeah, it's got blinky lights all over it. Blinky lights. It's basically yeah. got the same driver chip as the Pi Glow on, in fact, which is driving, I think, as many LEDs as it's possible for that chip to drive. So, yeah, that's a lot of stuff in there for a cool Fairly standard for us. Mm. So, yeah, that's the automation hat. Uh, I had another thing I wanted to talk about as well, which mm-hmm. is Blinked Ruby. Blinked Ruby. Um, people hey. who may or may not know me from way back when, at the beginning of my like, tinkering with a Pi, may know that I was heavily into Ruby back then and did the wiring Pi Ruby libraries and stuff like that. Um, some guy emailed me a couple of days ago and said, I'm working on a, a Ruby library for Blinked. What kind of license should I put it over? Do you want access to the GitHub repo? And he said, oh my god, that's awesome. As you may know, I like Ruby. Go for it. Uh, this is the license we use, but you can use whatever license you want because you're not directly using our code. Yeah. Um, and he's created this lovely, really shiny, polished um, GitHub repo with a lovely, shiny, polished mm. library for doing Blinked in Ruby. So if you're a Ruby programmer, uh, then it's kind of a good way to get started with our, our new starter kit, I guess. Yep. And I think... Uh, starter kit. Yeah. I think uh, Jim Darby has promised a Java one NJ because <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, reckless one. like that. Yeah, by proxy. Yeah, by doing everything else in Java and criticising my code. <laughs> choices. Sometimes yeah. rightfully so. There we go. He's not actually promised it there, but <clears throat> he, he said he's going to do it. He's he's now the Java guy for these he, things. He had a very good point regarding what was it the brightness settings on the the matrix display. The, yeah, the matrix driver chip, in fact. I put that it goes from 0 to 127, but it actually goes from 0 to 128, but the 128 bit is basically just code for turn everything on all of the time. Okay. So it goes from, yeah, 0 to 128 is regular brightness, and the, 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 the most significant bit is basically just on all Disco the time. Mode. It's a very, right. very weird driver chip in that respect. <laughs> you set that high bit, it doesn't matter what you set the brightness level to in the rest of the register, it's just always on. Yeah. And also, uh, Gareth uh, Wegro is he's doing that together with uh, is it Professor Hamish? Professor, indeed. Professor Hamish, Hamish Cunningham, Cunningham mm-hmm. who oh, also like make the Mopi that still kind of goes great guns. The UPS small well, UPS for your Pi. It's power supply for the Pi, isn't it? So yeah. you can have two separate sources of power, and you can basically unplug one, and it switches automatically to the other. Yeah, and just exactly. wang some solar in there and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Super anyway, yeah. For that kind of bit thing. of trivia, so you know who's behind the stuff. And get rid of the automation hat now. <laughs> Finally, people can see you uh, in all your resplendent glory. Phil. Where is this even going? <laughs> yeah. Also, I, so I really do recommend this sarsaparilla today. What is it? Well, it's really hot again today, randomly, after all the thunderstorms. So yeah, I went to like Nico's it. fridge, and <laughs> they, they've they obviously been shopping at... Uh, at the local Chinese supermarket. Oh, of course. So I've got sarsaparilla, and Gareth's got some kind of apple drink. You without, can tell. Without chemical colours. You can tell because it says oh, apple on it. Mm. Yes. It's got a picture of an apple on it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's infused with the fruity vitamins of, of a picture of an apple. It's not bad, actually. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, okay, let's get on to the main show. Let's get on to the WeGrow system. Main event. So, mm. what we got here? <laughs> wow. Series of small pipes. Lots of things, lots of wires. Maybe okay. we um, uh, should go to the overhead so I can show let's, let's get the, the um, in there. glory of this. So this is a prototype of our um, controller. We're calling it the Water Elf. Um, <laughs> I don't really know why. I think it was a slightly looks, drunken conversation with Hamish the elf a long time ago. <laughs> the Elf of the World. The Elf, yes. So if okay. we, you can blame the Elves. Um, 
So this is basically an ESP8266 um, microcontroller mm -hmm. and a few um, sensors and a little bit of control yep. and um, a pH monitoring separate circuit here and um, we're working on integrating this all into one sort of um, PCB for production so that's part of the Kickstarter but at the moment these prototypes are all a bit of a, a Frankenstein <laughs> of different uh, circuit boards um, so basically we measure water temperature and um, uh, level on the grow beds and air temperature and humidity and over here we measure pH and here's where the power comes in. Okay. So um, measuring pH, that's that's not something you see very often. No, um, it's <coughs> actually it's really fun and it's got lots of cool geeky sciency. So this is a pH probe. Um, so we um, picked them up on eBay for seven quid. Um, we did a bit of investigation and found that there was almost no difference we could find between the super expensive scientific ones and the cheapest chips eBay specials. I mean, I'm sure there are differences, yeah. but for our purposes, they work great. And they need to be replaced every six months, every year or so anyway. So it's quite a good idea to get something that's a bit cheaper anyway. Okay. And Especially if it does the job well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So in here, there's a little electrode, which um, I'll pull off, but it might be a bit hard to see. Um, it's basically a battery. Um, <laughs> so uh, pH is acidity, and um, basically um, this is like the two electrodes on a battery, and the stuff you put it in, it becomes the electrolyte. And based on, I don't know if that's showing up too yeah, well, there we go. but um, yeah, in here there's a little bulb with a sort of permeable, semi-permeable membrane. And um, so a very, very tiny voltage gets created, and <coughs> that's proportional to the acidity of the thing you put it in. So then you have a little um, circuit in here um, which um, buffers the um, tiny voltage. We're talking maybe 50 millivolts. Um, <laughs> and turns it into a nice I squared C. I love I squared C, by the way, my favorite protocol yep. for connecting up things like this. Um, and so you can just read a few numbers with, you know, half a dozen lines of code. Um, it's just a joy. Um, so, yeah, so that's one of the fun sciencey things. And, um, and part of our project is to try and do um, outreach and get into schools. So um, this is the kind of thing that um, works really well in a kind of classroom because you've got the physics and chemistry in the sensor and there's some nice maths um, that's, you know, uh, to calibrate the reading and then there's the biology of what pH sort of does to fish and plants as well. So, so in the system, yeah. pH is quite important because yeah, pH. If is, it ain't right, the fish are gonna die. Well, it's worse than that, or it's more important than that, even okay. because um, I've got to say, death is pretty important. Yeah, death is pretty important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure the decomposing important. fish <coughs> deoxygenate or oxygenate the water only for so long. They do, yes. But, um, <laughs> uh, so, but um, the thing is that the um, pH is constantly dropping, okay. basically. So um, get, let's get all sort of chemistry geeky for a sec. Um, the ammonia is NH4, and then that gets turned into nitrites, NO3 minus or something, and then there's a NO4 minus. So basically, it, you're always adding um, acidity, pro a proton, to the system as, as time goes on. So it's basically getting more and more acid you know, with each passing day. Yep. So if you don't take account of that, then basically your fish end up having an acid bath. Um, and the plants uh, don't like that either. So at some point you need to be adding a bit of um, sodium carbonate or calcium carbonate to, to buffer, to pull the pH back up again. Okay. So yeah, pH is definitely something that you need to be keeping an eye on you know, all the time in an aquaponics system. Yep. Um, and so we developed this electronics to take basically the sort of annoying, sort of tedious bits out of aquaponics. <laughs> I'm trying to reach back to my uh, my history of fish keeping at home. It was a very brief history because they ate each other and it was almost <laughs> had the the routine of one big fish left at the end. But um, I always had to take a small sample of water out and put it in these different testing vials and test it for different things. Exactly. Uh, if anything was out of kilter, you'd have to add something. 
and then you'd have to take half of the water out completely and you'd have to yeah. mix that with dechlorinated water to put back in and it's, it's a massive great big complicated hassle and it is yeah <laughs> and um, we want to try and avoid that sort of hassle as much as possible um, I mean sometimes people think that what we're trying to do is almost like robot farming but you know we don't really want to take the people out so much as take the tedious jobs out of the people and then you can visit and look at the fish and take care of the plants and, and harvest the yep. plants um, rather than every time you visit you have to go through some sort of tests <laughs> and kind of the boring bits basically. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and then of course having all this data is great for our sort of sciencey stuff where we look at um, different people's growing conditions and what's growing well and try and build up a database. So um, aquaponics is uh, quite an ancient form of farming so like ancient Aztecs and Chinese have been doing forms of aquaponics for thousands of years but recently <coughs> it's kind of uh, only really been studied sort of in, in detail since the sort of 70s and there's not a huge amount of knowledge um, about how to really kind of fine-tune and really get the most out of these systems. Uh, so that's where we're trying to um, get a lot of data all in one sort of big data set so that we can start to make these comparisons and um, you know get better at growing. These do you think pyramids have something to do with it? Uh, well there were, there were pyramids that they made out of rubbish in um, one of these aquaphonic systems. Yeah, they were amazing. <laughs> like, you know, thousands of years ago, they were <coughs> recycling um, their rubbish and making food systems out of it, um, yeah, in Central America. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to uh, catch up with these ancient guys. Cool. So the other things in terms of temperature of water, so you're monitoring temperature here. Yeah. Um, what, what, what's the deal there? Well, Do you try and cool down the water? What, it, it depends. I mean, we get these lovely little... Um, they're based on the Dallas uh, DS18B20s. Um, so, again, very cheap, readily available, and libraries um, really easy to kind of find and work with. OK. Um, so that's a great solution. And depends on the fish, really. Different fish... You can keep quite a lot of different fish. So if you're keeping a cold-water fish, like maybe trout or carp, then um, you probably need to worry about the water getting a bit too warm in the summer. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're keeping a warm water fish um, indoors, then you might need to worry about the water getting too cool, especially in the winter. Yep. So either way, it's important to kind of know what the water temperature is. Yep. And potentially our system um, can control electric sockets using those um, radio um, power sockets. Oh, so nice um, safety coupled electric socket control. Well, exactly. <coughs> you know, as a Kickstarter, we didn't really want to get into um, hacking mains. Um, that would have just added a layer of complexity, BS certification. Um, I mean, British standard, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, so we sidestepped all of that by hacking in to the radio waves um, and using off-the-shelf sort of remote sockets. So you can plug a heater into one of those okay. and heat the water if it's too cold or potentially a sort of fan or maybe some sort of chiller or some way of sort of cooling things down, maybe operating shades on a greenhouse. Um, so there's lots of sort of possibilities to control things there. Yep. And um, yeah, basically it's all about keeping the fish happy and the plants happy. <laughs> um, yeah, because <coughs> an unhappy fish is not a productive fish. Um, you know, this is, this is about growing food. So if your fish aren't happy and they're not mm -hmm. eating well, then you're not doing a very good job as a farmer. And you know, right. um, so yeah. Okay. So one of the bits you've put a lot of work in and a lot of iterations into is this here. Yeah, I'm very proud. Um, I'm uh, only um, peripherally involved with this valve. It's mostly the work of a couple of other people in particular. Okay. Um, collaborators of ours um, at a sort so of sister if organization. If you look there, you can just see through there. I'm actually showing. <laughs> my virtual torch through there, so you can actually get a good view. Um, oh yeah, it is. So there, you see, and what it's got is, it's basically got an inner tube, and it's got an air pump in there, and this restricts the flow of water. And you see there, it's just pushing the inner tube in to cut down the flow of water to a fraction of what it's. So what this is doing is basically just filling the outer cavity with air. 
Yeah. Yeah. It causes and then to be crushed by that airplane. You've got the ultrasonic sensors there, which tell you when... The water level. Yes. So um, it's designed to fill up the... So if you imagine this is actually mounted above the grow bed, yep. and then as the water level rises, um, when it gets to a critical... I think we've set it at seven centimetres, um, it should cut the... Pump. Hey! Hey! <coughs> Cool, and there you go. That goes back out. So yeah, so the commercial versions of these <coughs> valves that we looked into were two, three hundred pounds, um, which um, didn't fit our budget and also didn't, um, it just didn't seem like the right solution. So um, Paolo, particularly from Aquaponics Lab, um, toiled away. Um, he must have been through five, six iterations. And another guy, Mike, um, joined in and did some pr 3D printing. And now they've shrunk what started off as a sort of three foot long, foot wide cylinder has now been shrunk to this. Yeah. Um, so some 38 mil pipe, exactly. some ceiling there, and then you've got one of the pumps, haven't you? Yes. Which I was amazed at this because I was looked at this and it's like, that's one of the micro Metal Gear motors. Those things pop up everywhere. <laughs> they it's are on the close up. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I think this is actually um, out of a uh, heart rate monitor. Um, oh, heart uh, rate or blood pressure? Or yeah, blood yeah. pressure, sorry. That's so it. blood pressure, the little blood pressure cuff. Exactly. Yeah. So when you yeah. go to the doctor and um, they put the cuff on and there's a little ball <coughs> and it um, inflates the cuff, there's probably one of these. So they're um, pretty okay. potent then, aren't they? They're not bad, yeah. They're pretty pokey. Um, they it's run off again. three oh, volts, yeah. which is perfect. Um, it's not going to work. Um, so they run off three volts, which is perfect for, for our system because the um, ESP is a three volt device. Mm -hmm. And um, because they're designed for medical equipment, um, they're super reliable um, and really cheap, readily available. Um, so that's, that was perfect. So the entire sort of valve um, uh, has a kind of material cost of maybe sort of 20, 25 pounds. Um, so, you know, that's a massive saving from our um, original starting kind of competition yeah. of uh, two or three hundred. And then you're just hooking it up through some... Connectors. 3.5 mil jack. 3.5 mil jack, <laughs> yeah. I was really interested uh, to see that um, episode of the Bilge Tank uh, a couple of weeks ago where you went through your connector choices yeah. and um, I've been through a similar, uh, slightly less well tabulated process um, and it, it's basically it's it's really tough um, to find the right connector yep um, there's quite a lot of different parameters to consider and um, yeah so at the moment in um, here in the prototype you can see these these are some of the most my favorite connectors I've found they're waterproof they're um, they've got these lovely little um, sort of hats that you can oh, wow. seal on that I just think are so cute um, so they're like IP67 or something insane even when the connectors plugged in yep. um, but they're you know four or five pounds each you know and look and this thing needs <coughs> four of them and a, a slightly bigger um, water elf needs five wow. you know and that's so that's just a killer um, so we've looked at all sorts of different connectors, went through very similar process, slightly different um, needs for us. We didn't need to worry quite so much about number of insertions. Yep. So I saw, obviously, with flotilla education, you know, this that, that's going to be plugged in and unplugged all day long, every day, you know, ideally. Yep. Um, whereas we weren't quite so worried about that. Um, but we did need to get the price down and um, have something that we could manufacture uh, relatively cheaply in in some volume yep so um, for these we've um, gone for 3.5 mil headphone sockets yep and um, another great um, attribute of using something like this is that connectors and cables rather are readily available pretty yeah. available yeah but they also um, come gold plated yeah <laughs> which, um, which if you're in a bit of a damp um, kind of environment which uh, is prone to lots of corrosion um, having a bit of gold plating, I'm, I'm not so sure how much difference it's going to make, to be honest, but um, why not? You know, it looks quite bling as well. I quite like <laughs> yeah. that. Um, There's the thing with making the PCBs as well, having that Enig gold finish. Mm. Yeah. Makes yes. a bit of a difference. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it makes it easier to solder, it doesn't tarnish 
really. So, yeah, mm. should make a difference here as well, you'd hope. But, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. You've so, been through a few things, haven't you? You've kind of had the um, the temperature probes, you say, they wear out eventually. Uh, the they pH. get corroded. The pH, pH does. Ones, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a cleaning routine, but um, the semi-permeable membrane uh, gradually gets sort of clogged up with little tiny bits of gunk, okay. and um, yeah, needs to be replaced sort of every year or so. Yeah. Um, but there's quite a cute feature is that over time the sensitivity uh, of the probe goes down in quite a sort of steady, progressive, sort of predictable way. Yep. So we're we're going to put a feature in the firmware that basically sends you an alert when the pH is getting a bit old um, right. and prompts you to um, get another one. So, um, yeah, so that's at least, you know, s slightly manageable. Um, cool, that's quite yeah. cool. Um, another thing that um, I'm not sure if how much it's been done before is using these um, ultrasonic distance... Um, Let's get a little closer look at those. Yeah, <laughs> so these are um, ultrasonic distance... Um, sensors. And most people will recognise these as the little faces you find on the front of robots. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, but they work just great at um, detecting water level um, from, you know, without any contact. Um, I so may, you've yeah. looked at kind of infrared and stuff as well, and um, ultrasonic is the one where it hits water and bounces right back. Because yes. optical stuff is going to go, just get scattered. Um, and if there's sunlight um, being reflected off a sort of broken water surface that can create lots of reflections and can um yeah we didn't i didn't have very good success with the infrared um mm -hmm. but um yeah so i've potted this with hot melt glue um <laughs> and quite clearly i made little washers of hot <coughs> melt glue and then melted them with a hot air gun <laughs> um, so um yeah a bit ghetto um and you know uh, when we go into production i'm not sure uh, whether we'll be able to adopt that or go for something a little bit more. If you've ever taken regular. apart Chinese electronics, there's a lot of hot glue around. Yeah, and USB plastic. hubs especially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> so yeah, maybe just for tradition's sake we'll keep it. You know. Just put it on the inside instead. Yeah. <laughs> then yes. the engineers know where it is. Exactly. Cool. Right, so that's is that basically the system? The monitoring, the pumping um, and just keeping top and tail happy. Exactly. Um, I mean, the other thing that I really like about the ESP is that um, it's obviously a Wi-Fi um, and it's powerful enough to run a little web server. So all the kind of control and configuration, um, it creates its own hotspot and yep. then throws up its own web pages. Okay. Um, so you can use that to join a, an upstream network you can yeah. look at the, the actual data as it comes in and yep. t t toggle the valve override if you want to uh, override the timing sort of system. Or you can just whip your phone out and just... Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is quite useful. Um, so there's no need for any buttons and, you know, any of that, uh, or a display. Um, and, you know, I like that kind of um, cleanliness. And also, as if yeah. you... In a future world, we've, we talk, we've been told that the Internet of Things, you know, we're going to have hundreds of devices, thousands of devices. Um, well, we need ways to kind of control them and keep manage them that yep. don't involve going around each one, you know, with the four button and an LC two line LCD kind of configuring these things. That's just a nightmare. Which isn't going to last that long outdoors anyway. Well, that's another challenge. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, mm. So yeah. Cool. So this system here, you've had one running in the Winter Gardens at Sheffield. Yes, so visitors <coughs> to Sheffield can for another couple of days um, for, until uh, Saturday um, have a look at our demo system in the Winter Garden. Yep. Um, so that's uh, what we're calling a produce pod. So it's a tabletop but completely functional aquaponics system um, using IKEA recycling tubs. Um, <laughs> yep. Again, you know, we, we're really interested in doing systems that other people can replicate, basically. Um, so all of our stuff is open source, the electronics, Brilliant. the code, um, the documentation, the designs, um, and we try wherever we can to use or to avoid using things that are like UK only or, you know, specialist as much as possible. Um, yep. So IKEA produce uh, um, fits the bill for that. So you've got a couple of fish in the bottom and maybe half a dozen salad vegetables, things like that, on the top. 
Yep. And um, that could be on your kitchen kitchen surface or living room. Just a little internet of seeds grow. We know you can get quite a, a torrent of salad kind of pouring out of the top of an IKEA. Yeah. yeah. Kind of vaxa grow. Well, so. I mean, aquaponics is more productive than hydroponics. Uh, so it's kind of almost um, the top of the league table in terms of productivity. Um, so you you really do as a, as on a, on your own you'd have you'd have to co eat quite a lot of salad to keep up with one of these systems. Yep. Um, you know, if you, if you were two or more people, you could keep keep it um, under control. But otherwise, you need to have a really sort of quite a vigorous salad habit to keep up with the amount of sort of green leaves <coughs> that grow. You know. And if you're short on a bit of protein as well, then can you actually breed the fish in this environment? Well, just in case you wanted to take maybe a fish out for some reason. Um, absolutely. I mean, um, so different people, some people prefer not to um, harvest the fish um, yep. because they don't like eating fish. And also, um, I've experienced, you get very fond of um, things totally that, good. you know, are in your life. <laughs> I like to act um, like I'm harvest. <clears throat> you know, I've, I've also heard lots of stories from people like who keep chickens, for example, and they're, they're convinced when they start that, oh yeah, we'll be, every six months we'll have a roast chicken, you know, <laughs> and then when the push comes to the shove, they, um, they, they stick to the eggs. Yeah. And so I wouldn't be surprised if, if that happens to quite a few people. Um, but obviously you can grow edible fish species right. and um, then harvest them uh, as well. Right. Um, you do need to keep the system in a sort of approximate balance. Mm -hmm. So the fish are needed um, to fertilize the plants and the yep. plants are needed to filter the fish. So if you have two fish and you harvest one, um, it's a good idea to have a healthy um, harvest of salad at the same time to keep the two elements in approximate sort of equilibrium. Yep. So yeah, but with that um, caveat, yeah, I've um, I've been promised a fish from um, volunteering with the um, incredible Aqua Garden in Todmorden <laughs> for several years now, and every time I go, they kind of give me some excuses about why they can't quite give me my fish supper um, yet. But um, yeah, I'm still hoping. But you can adopt the fish. Yeah, <laughs> adopt should. the fish. Yeah, yes. adopt it. I could be cool. eating you. <coughs> yep. I think also this week the other bit of news we didn't cover earlier was we got our Tingbot. Oh, Tingbot! Yay! <coughs> we, we finally got our Tingbot in the post, so I think Phil will be talking about that at some point, won't you? Yeah, we'll, we'll bring that onto a future build shank when we've got a bit more time. Yeah. It's so cute! This is the right way to deal with LCD displays in the pie. Cool. So, yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. So, Good anything else you want to talk about with the system? Anything we haven't covered, really? Um, there's probably all sorts of things that I'll remember immediately after we finish. Um, yeah. That's all right. Any questions, ask them on the Kickstarter. Yes, exactly. The link we're is at the end of the video description below in YouTube. Yeah, we're very happy to field questions. Um, if you're in Sheffield, um, you know, drop us a message. We'll try and give you a tour of our... We've got two systems, a small and a big one, um, at the University of Sheffield. Cool. So, um, yeah, please feel free to send messages and, um, yeah, of course, back our Kickstarter. Brilliant. All right, thanks for coming in. Good ah, to see you again. Thanks for having me. Always good to chat, geekery. <laughs> and don't forget to... We've got some great names for fish <laughs> coming up in the chat. Lunch, Food, lunch, dinner. dinner. <laughs> dinner. <laughs> There's this really weird one. It's kind of... I went through a phase of looking at the kind of Japanese cuisine thing where they will serve you, like, live sea urchin. And they have one where they will get the fish out of the tank, slice a bit off it, cook it for you, but put the fish back in the tank. <laughs> and the fish just carries on going, what the hell just happened? What the heck? I know, weird, weird, weird. well, different. different. An unusual cultural phenomenon different. with food. <laughs> the moment they have the frog heart and pour soy sauce on it to make it beat again. Because you get the, the salts, oh. make it conduct. Wow. So the little, it's kind of, yeah. And the octopus tentacles. Anyway, <laughs> this is not that. Eat salad. I'm feeling crazy. Now. Salad is good. Mm. Sorry. Salad is good. Yeah. It's a bit graphic, that. I should have warned people. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to like us on YouTube. Comment also on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. And probably subscribe too. Yeah, some kind of subscription would be good. Yeah. See you next week. And back, 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 back. Bye bye. <laughs>